Hey, everybody. It's Dan from the Outdoor Trade Show Network. I got Tim Raditz on here with TM Custom Lures. And so what I'm going to do is this. Tim, um, make some – you make wood custom baits. You probably – you're one of the – I think one of the best guys – or top guys out there making wood custom baits. So – You've got an interesting story. There's a lot that has to do with what's going on at TR Custom Baits. And what I would like, Tim, is I'm going to turn this over to you and you let people kind of tell the story of what you told me um, or introduce yourself, I guess, and then tell everybody uh, how this all came about and how you go about making the, 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 the really, really, really nice custom or, or the, the lures that you make today. All right. Well, thanks, Dan. So my name is Tim Raditz. Uh, our company is TR Custom Lures, and we specialize in wood topwater, uh, primarily flap tails. And now we're getting into toppers, and we're coming out this year with our own brass blade delta bladed topper. We're the first ones to ever do it. So just a little backstory. Like most lure makers, a lot of our stuff started out of necessity. We wanted to find lures. Couldn't find them, so I made them myself. But, well, uh, but you also talked about too that that how this I, I like the story of how this all came about, Tim. Okay, um, kind kind of a, a sad beginning that turned out to be a good thing for us. But so my dad was in the hospital for a while. Uh, he had terminal lung cancer. So one day we just we couldn't sit there any longer, so we went. Let's go get a coffee, go for a walk. We went to Menards. We're just wandering around to kill time. And we came across this wood lathe. And I said, you know what? I'd really like to start making my own lures. I've always whittled them, uh, tied flies for a lot of years, did a lot of trout fishing and that kind of thing. And so I just I looked at that lathe and it didn't go any further. And then after dad passed, I had uh, dealing with some depression after that. And my wife surprised me with that lathe and uh, started turning baits and we were fishing the Chippewa flowage quite a bit and before we'd go every trip I'd check three bars online and check their musky boards online and guys were getting a lot of fish on flap tails and I couldn't find any so I found some pictures of an old snodlow and one of my I'm a lure collector so I found a picture of a snodlow and I made my own and the first spot we hit on the flowage 10 casts in I caught a 44 inch it was almost 25 pounds and that's the first fish that I caught in one of my own lures. So it was really cool. And I still have that lure. I retired it after that, hung it up, and that one got retired. And that gets the juices flowing in, too. That really gets the juices going. Oh, absolutely. Because then you start thinking, well, what else can I make? So I made a lot of flap tails for a while there. Um, and the first ones I sold, uh, our, our oldest daughter was in kindergarten and took a lure to show and tell. And the teacher called home, did you guys really make that lure? Yeah. Well, can you make some more? So I made her five for her husband, father-in-law, brother-in-law, sister-in-law. And I wrote, you know, daddy's lucky bait, good luck, grandpa, that kind of thing. They just ate it up. So, and they're, they're still good friends of ours. They were over here today helping us with maple syrup. So that was the first lures that I sold to anybody. Otherwise, I was just making them for myself, giving them to friends, giving them to family, that kind of thing. So then when did you start the shows? What what got you? Because the shows is where things took off for you. Absolutely. So we have a cabin up in Bylas County, and I would always stop at Raleigh and Helens and buy my parts because I had no connections at that point of any idea where to get this stuff. And in the back of the Raleigh and Helens catalog, there's all the lure components. So I was going to make myself some more flap tails. So we stopped in and I had five flap tails in a bag, laid them on the counter. And this guy was there talking to the guy working behind the counter. And he says to me, oh, you make flap tails? Yeah, I make a few. Well, would you make me one? And no one had ever like asked me to make anything. Like, oh, I guess. So I said, he said, I want a black with a lime green tail, the lime green back half. No, oh, well, how do I send it to you? Are you going to the musky show in Wasson in two weeks? Yeah, I was planning on going. We'll just bring it there. I'll, I'll be around. And I had no idea that guy was Rich Reiner. So <laughs> I made my first custom order for Rich, and it turned out to be his show. 
And the next year I had a booth in the show and uh, Rich was just instrumental in us growing, getting us connected to this is where you get parts. This is where you get that. Um, this is how you promote yourself. Rich is huge in that. Yeah. We wouldn't be anywhere without Rich. Well, the other one is, is mainly where people connect with you and people find you is through your Facebook page, TR Custom Lures, right? That's the other one where, where you interact with most of your, or how you get out yeah, to the world. Yep, absolutely. My wife does a great job of managing our Facebook page. That's how we do all of our custom orders. Um, when we have a surplus of lures, like after the show now, we have some leftovers. She'll post them there a few a week. And that's, yeah, that's our, our main promotion. I heard you didn't have much and... left. I heard from a little bird, you didn't have many left over from the show. I heard you sold uh, most of what you had at the show. Yeah, we were very, very pleased with how we did. We were 70, like 75% over our best show up. We sold 176 in two and a half days. But see, that's because the our previous around. record. Yeah, the word's gotten around. The word has gotten around of what you do and, and what you got there. Well, we appreciate that. You know, um, yeah, and you make them out of wood. What I like is I like the wood. I like the wood baits. I like baits that are made out of wood. So I'm a definitely a traditionalist. If you look at my paint jobs, you'll see that I'm a Frenchy disciple. Uh, definitely pattern after Frenchie. And Influence. that's Frenchie LeMay. If, for those that don't know, it's Frenchie LeMay, right? Yep. Yeah, I don't get into the $100 paint jobs, all the high def with the thin details and all that stuff. I, I do a nice job of traditional lace, uh, simple stuff done well. Your business is catching fish. That's your business. Your business is catching fish, not paint jobs. A uh, hundred dollar paint jobs don't catch fish. No, no, no. You know, muskies that's, that's... don't. Muskies don't bite the bar. You know, a bar fighter jerk bait because it has a gorgeous paint job. They bite it because it hangs there and wiggles. Okay. So next question: What do you got? Show off some of your stuff. You know, we've teased people enough. Show off a little of what you got there. All right. So this is our turtle topper. This is the big one we're promoting now. We're the first ones. And I'm a student of musky baits. We're the first ones to ever have a delta blade made out of brass. So you get oh. better durability. Everyone uses the same aluminum stamp delta, and we make our own out of brass. So you got a better squeak, better chirp, and every bait you ever get from me, I've tuned it. I built a 10 foot trough in the basement, and we live on a lake. So in the summer, I cast every bait before I sell it. Okay. Dave Dorsey asks a question here. What kind of wood do you use? Hi, Dave. Hi, Dave. Dave Dorsey there. Dave, how are you? What kind of wood do you use, Tim? So the larger ones, I use a white pine. They're buoyant enough with a larger body. And the smaller stuff like our tail baits, small flap tails, two-point toppers, I use western red cedar. Globes, I use western red cedar. Oh, you do? Okay. Yep. Okay. Yeah, it's, now, it's what, hard to find. It's expensive, what but. What did you go to Western Red Cedar? I have to ask, what made you pick Western Red Cedar? Um, it's very buoyant and it holds up because I use everything that we make has our own brass tails. And brass huh? is heavier than aluminum and, or stainless. Okay. So, so I need a, I, it was out of experimentation, trying lots of different wood and lots of stuff that sank. Yeah, because I know a lot of guys use the balsams. That's why I was asking why you went to the Red Cedar. A lot of guys use the balsams. Yeah, it, it's hard to turn. It chips like, and you look at it, it wrong. Does. I hate balsam. Chips. Between you and me, I'm not a balsam fan. And availability. Uh, so I'm I'm buying uh, deck spindles, 30, 36 or 40 inch deck spindles. And I can get it at any of our local hardware stores. So it's oh, okay. readily available, too. Okay. Show off a couple more lures. I like what you got there. Show off a couple more, Terry. All right. So this is our bullet flap tail. We've had uh, real good success with this. And, again, we make our own tail. 35,000 brass. 
and we have an empty rifle cartridge in the back. And when the tail rotates, you get that metal on metal, random splash. They're all tuned. The bullet depth has to be just right to get the right amount of random clang. Otherwise it hits too much and it won't flip, won't splash. So that's kind of our, our trademark bait is a flap tail. Right. I know that's, that's the word I got probably five years ago is, hey, this guy, this Tim guy at TM Customs, man, you got to see what he's making. So that's what I heard about you. But we make a lot of, a lot of other stuff, a lot of globes. Uh, we're working on something now. Can't give too much away. Okay. But part of it is that the rear section, instead of being a rotary tail bait, part of it's a globe, but we're going to have a, a counter rotating two point prop. Okay. So you get metal on metal plus the splash plus the squeak and the chirp of the brass on brass. I run brass tubing through all my tail pieces. On now a you, said, wire. you said you had some smaller baits. You said you. Did you say something about some smaller baits that you had? Um, not that I've got here to show you. Uh, we do some two-point toppers similar to the old uh, Cisco Kid topper. Oh, those Surfer. are nice. I like those. Yep. And again, I make my own two-point blades, and I make a brass bushing that I press in, and they just chirp and chatter like crazy. Oh, nice. Okay. Well, anything else you want to tell people about? Aaron Teklin. Aaron Teklin came on and said, Tim's got some really great lures. Keep up the great work. Yep. So Aaron, Aaron makes some good stuff, man. Yep. Yeah, we uh, we were neighbors at the booth at the uh, Wisconsin Muskie Expo a couple weeks ago. He bought a lure from me. Yeah. Tim, actually, he, he's bought several in the past. Yeah. Yeah. Aaron, Aaron, likes, Aaron likes to catch big fish. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, he was a great neighbor. Lots of fun. He is. He is. What else you got for us? What else you want to share with everybody? Um, so last year we did a ton of customs without doing any shows. Uh, we were just being, we had an uh, abundance of caution, you know, because of COVID. We didn't okay. go to any, any sports shows. We didn't do any festivals, that kind of thing. So we were concentrating on just doing one-of-a-kind customs. And I did over 200, and I just got burned out on customs. Oh so this wow! This year we're gonna. Yeah, I mean everything was everything was one of a kind. Uh, some of the paint jobs got a little ridiculous, and the details get a little carried away. So this year we're gonna concentrate more on we're gonna add, hopefully, do George's Minnesota Muskie Show next year, and of course do. Wisconsin Muskie Expo, we love doing that show. It's, you know, it's in our backyard. It's 35 minutes from home. But we're going to cut back on the amount of customs we're doing this year. Okay. We're, we're, we're still going to make baits. We're still going to sell baits, you know. But I, I got to concentrate on what, what makes us happy and uh, what I want to make for a while. But we're still going to release baits on our Facebook. And we sell some on Muskie Flea Market as well. And of course, we're doing two shows. Okay, okay. Um, I guess I think you kind of covered it. You, you covered your bases there, didn't you? You you uh, do you have a variety of colors or what? On the colors, you said you did a lot of custom stuff. So, um, if if people get a hold of you, are you pretty open to color patterns, or do you have just some certain set color patterns? No, not at all. That's that's one thing I would miss about doing customs is that where that's where I've gotten all my best colors is custom requests. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. Like this one right here, this fire belly that started out as a custom request last year. Oh, it did. Yep. And same as this here. Show a little bit more to the side, show it over a little, uh, the other way, the other way, Tim, the other way. I love looking there we at go. stuff like that. There you go. Look at that. That's yeah. beautiful. Jason Smith from uh, from Smith uh, Fishing Outdoors. Jason and Fisher. This is something that they had requested. Okay, I love. I they wanted more orange. They do a good job. Those guys are really good. Yeah. Oh, they're great. We we got to film a, a show with them last year. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, that. Yeah, they're good people. 
They're just really yep. good people. What else you got there for cut? What else you want to show? What else you got to show off? Give me one second. Here's some other stuff that, and everything in this box started out as custom requests. Ain't that amazing how that works? Isn't that amazing how, yeah, look at that. This one's called Craig's Perch. Because it's pretty simple. A guy named Craig sent us uh, pictures of an old grandma lure crankbait in this color pattern. And he said, I want it to look like that. And so my <laughs> wife asked, well, how is Craig's perch bait coming? So it just kind of morphed into Craig's perch. Oh. And then this is another one. We call this the, uh, the red-eyed demon. Oh, nice. And then we do the scale patterns in silver, copper, you know, any number of colors for different contrasts. So we nice. have fun with that pattern. And here's another one from Jason and Fisher. They wanted. Hey, I got one from you. That color right there is a heck of a suik bait. Suik's yep. got a color like that. that that's just a, just tear, it's a suik that tears them up. Yeah, this was another one that uh, Fisher really liked, the black and orange. They use a lot of, well, I can't, probably shouldn't give their secrets, but they use a lot of black and orange. Yeah. And here's one from a Rich Reinert request that he, you know, he's been in a lot of different capacities of different bait companies over the years, but this is a color they used to make back in the day, and he called it Old School Bus. Yeah. And it kind of reminiscent of his old uh, stomper that he used to make. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, so, that's a good color. Every, it's always a good color. Yep. Steve Dorsey has Adams on here. So we got Adams on Adams. Switlin I can't say Adams last name. I swear to God, I'm terrible. Switlinski Adams on here. Switlinski. Yeah. Then Dave asked, how long does it take to complete a lure? Uh, from start start to finish? It depends on what it is and if I have to make the brass blades, because a lot of these, bla these brass blades, I cut them on a bandsaw, grind them with a Dremel, deburr them and polish them myself. So I can have, you know, a half hour just in the blade. I know. If, I if know I'm doing a custom, probably a, a solid three hours. And a lot of the stuff, you know, I'll turn a whole bunch of bodies and then I'll do batches of 15 or 20 of a color. Like when we're prepping for a show, it's hard to say how much time I spend on any one lure because I'm doing all the body prep, then priming, then you know, base paint. And then I'll, I only need paint with one airbrush. So I'll do that color, go clean it and switch to another color. Yeah, that's what I but, did too. You know, I guess sh short answer, probably a minimum of three hours in any one lure. Yeah. And some a lot more. We're going to call it Adam C. Oh. Adam said the last name. We're just going to call him Adam C. Yeah, Adam C. Yeah. C. Okay. <laughs> See, you're in Stevens Point, so you got a lot of Polish people up there. You're, you're pretty, you're better at pronouncing the Polish names. Uh, most of my neighbors and everyone I went to high school with, we call them the, uh, they're all on the ski team. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I like anything else you want to tell people, Tim? Um, well, I think we make a, a nice lure at a very fair price. You know, everyone says, well, you got you to double your price. I, I just don't want to get into that. Some of the, it's become the Wild West on custom lures where guys just name their price and someone's going to pay it. But yeah. I think we make, a, we make a nice lure at a fair price. Okay. Yeah, I agree. I agree. You do a good job. So... With that, I think maybe we should say goodnight to everybody. I'd like to do more of these. And and what here's another one I'd like to share. I'm I've been trying to share this. If oh here, let me do this here. So if you're interested in doing this, it's easy to do. I want people to talk about their companies, talk about what they make. That's why I, I enjoy doing this, because I learned pretty much how you came about with what you do. Um and I just I wish more people would get a hold of me because I would just like to talk to them about their products and talk about what they're doing. It, it, it fascinates me. So 
Yeah, thank, thank you, Dan. It's a, it's a good platform. Let's us get our message out there and show off what we do. Yeah, I think just talk to people. I just, I enjoy where, you know, we talk to people. So at that, I think I'm going to say, um, let everybody know uh, goodbye. You got anything, any last words that you'd like to tell people? Uh, no, if you want to contact us, uh, it's TR Custom Lures on Facebook. Uh, my wife runs the Facebook, so be nice. Uh, <laughs> if, if you ever do anything on Facebook, you're dealing with her. Oh, okay. Okay. She takes all of our orders. Uh, I make the lures, but she runs the entire business side of it. She takes care of all of the taxes and the excise tax and all that, all the headaches I don't want to deal with. And she uh, takes care of that. Adam want to know anything big coming out next year for TR custom lures. Well, I, I, so I know what he's alluding to. I've been yeah, working on something yeah, for... He's about, got the inside track on a lot of people. Yeah, Adam is our, our biggest cheerleader. Adam has become a really, really good friend to us. Yeah. So, yeah, Adam's awesome. But uh, he's talking about the Big Al. So we have twin daughters, and when they were real little, Allie was the smaller of the two, but she had a very big voice, very, uh, very loud for a small package. So I just started working on this little lure that was just crazy loud. So naturally we called it the Big Al, uh, but it requires soldering to keep, there's counter rotating brass pieces that clang. And I talked to Matt Worth, uh, the last day of the Wisconsin Muskie Expo and he finally helped me crack the code of soldering stainless wire, which I've been struggling. In. I'm a plumber by trade. So uh, it was kind of humiliating that I couldn't solder that but now that i've got that figured out and we're working on some prototypes on that we're not ready to release that yet okay yeah that's what adam's alluding to the, the big al it's coming <laughs> playing with it this morning making blades for it that's funny that's funny okay well he's just he wants to, to uh be first in line to get one i know that oh i know i know what adam's up to trust me adam adam, adam yeah adam likes to catch fish that's adam's program oh yeah yeah, I got to fish with Adam this summer. Last, the last musky trip in our boat before we sold it. Oh, okay, nice. Yep, Adam was my boat partner. Okay, so that's nice. Nope, that's nice. So with that, I think I'm gonna. I think we covered our bases. Today. I'd like to do more of these. Anytime you want to talk about what you got going on in TR Customs, you're more than welcome, Tim. And 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 I want to put that out to everybody. Please, you see how easy this is to do. I send you a link. We can come on here. We talk about your products, talk about your company. So I enjoy this. I, I and, and to me, it's thank you. Thank you for taking the time and doing this. Well, thank you, Dan. Thanks for giving us the platform. Um, and with that, I think I'm going to do my thing here to where uh, I'm going to say good night to everybody. And like I said, if there's any, you had any last words. No, I think we covered everything. Thank you. Okay. And then we'll be back. We'll do this again. So with that, I'm going to say uh, thank you, Tim. And then I'm going to say thank you, everybody, and enjoy us for more of these. Thanks.